Hey guys, how's it going? Ryan here back with another video on functional programming. Now, let's say that I'm interested in FPTS and I'm looking at the documentation. Let's go check out the API. Um, and this lists all the modules here. And as I scroll down, what I realize is there is a ton of stuff here. And it all looks kind of complex, right? Like hating algebra, IO either, join simulatus. This is a lot of stuff. I don't know what half of it does and it's very tempting to just, uh, you know, go in a different direction. Well, what I wanna do today is actually just start at the beginning. Like, let's start with something simple, right? So if I scroll up to the top, I see here a module called Array. And yeah, that sounds pretty simple, simple enough. So let's click on that. I'll scroll down and I see, okay, we have filter, we've got reduce, we've got map. I recognize all of these. There's some other stuff here, Will, whether those, those sound kind of cool, right? Um, but let's just start with what we know, okay? So I, I have a function here called do something. Um, and what I wanna do is actually to take this function and refactor it to make it more functional using FPTS and the array module. So let's take a look at wh what this does. So uh, it takes in two arrays and at every index we find the maximum number from either one of the two arrays and then once we have all of the maximum numbers we'll add those up and return that value so i take the length of the smaller array i initialize i initialize a total variable and then open up a loop and at every index i find the maximum value from the two arrays and increment our total by that value and once we're done we can return that so if I were to write a little bit of documentation for this, maybe maybe it looks something like this. So we have our first array, and then let's say we have our second one. And what we wanna do is visit every index. We take the maximum value, right? And in this case, we would return eight. Now, this function looks pretty reasonable. Actually, it looks pretty clean, but there are a couple of things that jump out at me here. So first off, we have mutable variables. So in this example, we have total, which we initialize to be zero, and then we're changing the value at every iteration. We also have this, this iterator i that, that's changing values. Um, so, so I'm gonna wanna change that up. Uh, another thing is, is like we have this loop here, right? Um, which is fine, except that it's actually a fairly low level mechanism of telling the computer exactly what we wanna do when what we're doing here is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So let's see if we can abstract away some of those details. So I'm gonna start off and I'm going to import the things that I need. So I'll import um, pipe from FPTS function. And I'm also gonna import everything from the array module as A. Okay, uh, and this is from FPTS array. So, so the plan here is I'm gonna take this function, I wanna refactor it, and I'm actually gonna refactor it twice. On the first refactor, I'm going to use the array module. And then in the second refactor, we're going to bring in the pipe function and see how that works, okay? So, so let's see here. I'm gonna keep the same signature, but instead of do something, I'll call it, I don't know, functionalize something. Okay, now the way that I wanna go about this is I wanna take my two arrays and I wanna zip them up, right? So that instead of having two different arrays, we have a single array that contains pairs of values. So I'm gonna create something called zipped. And for this, I go to the array module and I'm reading through some of the documentation and I find this function and it's called zip. And I'm just going to feed it both of my arrays. So now instead of two arrays, we have a single array of pairs. Okay, now for the second operation, what I need to do is I need to visit every pair, you know, every index, and find the maximum value from that pair. So I'll create something called max, and in order to do this, I'm gonna use the map function from the array module. I'm gonna specify in here the operation that I want to perform, which is I wanna take the pair, and I want to find the maximum value. Okay, now what I see here is that the TypeScript is, is complaining and it says 
this is this type is unknown. We don't know what this is, which uh, seems weird, but it actually makes sense. So if you look at this so far, all we've specified in this map function is just this this little anonymous function here. Uh, TypeScript has no information about what pair actually is, and that's why it's complaining. So what I'm actually going to do here is to tell it what I expect this type to be. Um, and then later on, we're going to come back and I'm going to change this up a little bit. But, but now I've specified the type. It knows that this is a valid operation, but there's still something missing here, which is that I haven't actually operated on anything. I haven't told it what we're operating on. All I've specified is this little anonymous function. So what I need to do is to feed in the thing that I'm operating on. So in that case, in this case, we're, we're going to feed it the, the zipped array, right? So that looks good. Uh, so now what I want to do is I want to sum up all of these maximum values. So I'll create my variable total. And for this, I'm going to use the reduce function. Um, I look again, I check the documentation uh, and I'm going to start this reduction at a value of zero. And then I need to specify the operation, which is going to take an accumulator and the element. And I'm going to add these two things together. Now, again, as you can see, it's complaining. We don't know what the types are. Um, uh, if all you're looking at is this function, we, we have no idea what A and B is. So again, I'm going to go ahead for now, and I'm going to specify what I expect these types to be. So it's not complaining anymore. Um, and I need to finish this off by, again, feeding in the thing that I'm operating on. Right. So if you take a look at this, what you can see is there's there's kind of like a flow here, right? We start with array one. That's the thing that we're operating on. We zip it with array two to get the zipped, and then we feed that to get max, and then we feed in that to get total. So finally, what we can do is we can return total. Uh, total here is just is the number that we're expecting, and and that looks good. So there's there's a few things to notice here. So so let's talk about that for a second. So first off, what I've done is, is to functionalize this. I've gotten rid of all of our mutable variables. So before we had this total variable that was changing, we had our iterator. Now you can see that there's no more mutable variables. All of these are const, right? So that looks good. And secondly, we've gotten rid of this for loop, which is kind of nice, right? We've abstracted the details of the iteration away into these little functions, zip, map, and reduce. Now, uh, there are a couple of other things that aren't so great here. Uh, and the first is that we've had to specify the type at every single operation. Uh, so it'd be nice if we can kind of uh, deal with that in a different way. Another thing is that we've had to manually carry through the thing that we're operating on. So it started with array one, and then it became zipped, and then we fed that to our second operation, it became max, and then we fed that in. Uh, what we really want to do is to compose all of these operations together in a way where this plumbing happens automatically, and we get it for free. So that brings us to the second refactor, where again, we've already used our array module, right? Zip, map, reduce. Now we want to bring in and incorporate the pipe function. So I'm going to start another function. Um, we're going to have the same sig signature, except that it's going to be called, let's call it compose something. OK, now. We want to do the same thing here, but it's going to work out a little bit differently. And you should pay attention here because this is actually kind of important. Uh, pipe is probably the primary way that you'll be interacting with the FPTS library. Once you learn how to use pipe, you pretty much carry that same pattern throughout every other module that you might incorporate into your code base. So the way that this works is I'm going to start by opening up the pipe operation. Okay. Now, the first thing that I feed the pipe every single time is the thing that I'm operating on, okay? So in this case, that's gonna be array one. And you can see we've already made it 
uh, happy, it's no longer complaining. Now, after we've fed it the thing that we're operating on, every other argument into pipe is going to be an operation that we want to perform. So let's see what this looks like. First, we're going to start with our zip operation. So I'll say a dot zip. I feed it the dependency here, which is array two, and that's it. I'm done here. I'm not going to feed it the thing that we're operating on. I've already done that in the first argument and I've already told pipe, look, we're gonna operate on array. Just keep that in mind. Now pipe is going to handle all of the plumbing. It will pass array one to our operation. So what I'm not doing here is I'm not feeding in array one to our operation because pipe is giving us that for free, which is nice, it keeps it simple. So that's our first operation. Now for the second one, again, I'm pretty much gonna do the same thing here. We have our pairs and we need to find the max. But uh, notice two things that are different here. One is we didn't need to specify the type information for pair, right? Even though this is only a function here, uh, TypeScript understands what type pair is expected to be because we fed in array one into this pipe operation. And of course, we know what the type of information for array one is, it's an array of numbers. So then TypeScript and pipe can carry that information all the way through the chain of operations, which is really nice. And again, I'm not feeding in anything here. Pipe is taking care of that for me. Okay, so let's finish this up. We have one more, so I uh, will type out the reduce operation. We're gonna do uh, the same thing here, except again, there's no need to specify the types and there's no need to specify what we're operating on. So if I go ahead and I, I save this, pipe will return the final value, the final thing that comes out of all of these operations, which in this case is just a number. So we could complete the operation, the function, by just returning total. Um, but actually normally what you would do here is, is a little bit different, just to keep it clean. Rather than having a separate return statement, what I'll do is just directly return the thing that comes out from the pipe operation. Okay, so a couple of things to note here. Um, again, we've taken a very functional approach here. We've specified and we've chained together each of our, each of our operations um, and we've operated on this initial argument, array one. There's no mutable variables. And again, you can see uh, one thing that changed here is that instead of, instead of having to save every step in the chain to a different variable that we've named, instead pipe carries this through in a very clean uh, and declarative way so that you can almost just read down all of the operations that you want to perform, right? Okay, I'm going to take my array and I'm going to zip it and I'm going to map over it to get the maxes and then I reduce all of these to a single number and I'm done. Now, uh, some people might look at this and think, uh, no, this is, this is awful, I can barely read this. Like, I didn't know that there was a zip operation. I, I can't figure out what I should be feeding to map and I'm still not even sure what reduce does. And uh, my response would be, I mean, like I, I, I agree 100%. If you don't recognize these operations, if you haven't already built an intuition for these abstractions and what they do and what they're accomplishing, then of course this style of programming will not appeal to you. Um, so it does take time and it takes effort to, again, build an intuition for what these abstractions are. The motivation behind why you would want to do that, why you would want to program in this style, is that after you've developed an intuition for those abstractions, now you've sort of graduated to um, kind of a higher level of abstraction so that you're more prepared to tackle more complex problems. Now, if you like this approach, then like and subscribe. Uh, there's more content to come. I'll see you guys next time.